Welcome home, everybody. Welcome home. Welcome to your oasis of peace and just goodness and amazing and awesome and beauty and life and fulfillment and joy and all of that. Welcome. Oh, I like that greeting. I should do that more often. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to Save the Good Girl. This is the SOE edition. And honestly, to be real, you should know what SOE stands for. But if you don't, because you're new and you just started listening to me, thank you. And I love you for that. But SOE stands for Shot of Erica. And consider this like a shot of tequila, espresso, green juice, whatever you like. That shot to get you there, that goodness to get you there. But this is a shot for the soul. And in this episode, I really want to talk about the fact that when you lose something, when you lose a friend, when you lose a job, when you lose a relationship, when you you lose something, you're at a loss and you just feel like, wow. And what happens is we tend to dwell on that loss and we need to focus on the amazing things that we do have. And there's certain things we can do to remind us. So we need to talk about that. And you know, I got you get, grab your coffee, grab your tea, grab your drink, whatever that you like, have a sip. And let's talk about this because we got to focus. We, we, we just got to change our minds. Yep. Yeah, let's shift. Come on. We will get back to this fabulous episode, but I just wanted to let you know that you can find Save the Good Girl on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube. There is also a chance for you to be featured on the show. Check out the link in the description to send me a voice message. In addition to the podcast, did you know that Save the Good Girl has a blog? Be a part of VIP by subscribing to the email list on savethegoodgirl.com. So many options to stay connected. All right, let's get back to the episode. Universally, I think that it is safe to say that we have all experienced some type of separation, whether it's separation from your employer, whether it's separation from a relationship, whether it's separation from a friend, whether it's separation from family, and it hurts. It really, really hurts. And I, I've said this before, and I still believe that it's important for you to feel the feelings gather those thoughts and see how you really feel about the situation and allow yourself time to heal from it. The issue is dwelling. The issue is whether you want to or not, life continues to move on. So you can choose to dwell. You can choose to be sad and that's fine. That's fine. But eventually we have to think and move forward. Tony Robbins talked about something called state story and strategy. And your state is your state of mind. How do you feel about the situation? The story is, what are you telling yourself? And then the strategy is, okay, so what are you going to do about it? And the issue with a lot of people, they never change the story. And pain and being hurt from people and the fact that you lost this relationship, you lost this job, you lost this, you lost that. It hurts. It does hurt. It really, really does. And I've experienced all of it. (laughs) I've experienced loss in every single area. And what I will say is that it does hurt your feelings, especially when it comes to a relationship with someone that you really cared for. And then you're you're not in that relationship. And I'm not, I'm not talking about just romantically. I'm just saying, even with a friend, you know, it hurts. And what I've realized is that it's a blessing for you to listen to this episode right now. Um, It's a blessing that you are able to have access to the internet to play this episode, right? And you have a phone or you have a computer or however you're listening. And I realized, and I was literally telling my friend that how dare I dwell on those that are not in my life and the things that I don't have. There's no need for me to dwell upon it. There's a difference between feeling the feelings and letting it out and then dwelling. And I think it's really important to focus on what you do have versus on what you don't. And I've developed a method where when I'm having a very, 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 very rough week, I force myself to write in my gratitude journal because it forces you to think about the good things that you do have and the people that you do have versus focusing on those who literally chose not to be in your life. Like they've made a decision to not be in your life and for whatever reason, right? It could have been your fault. It could have been their fault. Whatever the case is, they're not in your life. 
So at this point, we can be sad about it and we can have our thoughts about it. But um, you have to focus on those who are there. And I felt like how disrespectful it is to God who continues to replenish me and replenish me with amazing people that are in my life, amazing people that are consistently there asking me, how am I? You know, when somebody says to you, like, how are you? And you're like, oh, I'm good. Like, it, it, it's almost robotic. Like, it's almost instant. Like, it's 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 not really intentional. It's just like, how you doing? I'm good, you know, versus people who really want to know, like, how are you? And you're like, I'm fucking going through shit right now. <laughs> like, And then it opens up a whole story. And I think based on my experiences and what I've seen, I think I've, I've had a lot of relationships that, that have dwindled and I, and it did hurt my feelings. It did bother me. I've had a lot of relationships, um, in all facets, you know, family, friends, um, men, you know, that bothered me. But then I'm just like, I can't dwell on that because I have too many people in my life who genuinely care about my well-being. And I have too many people in my life who genuinely want to see me do well, who check in on me. So I have to shift my energy and focus on those who are focusing on me. And I'm saying that because you need to also focus on those who are focusing on you. Yes, you have been hurt. Yes, you lost this job. Yes, you lost this friend. Yes, you and your family are not speaking. That's all right. Um, there's other people in your life. God continues to replenish and you can't dwell on that because it's disrespectful to him. It's disrespectful that he has allowed you to have all these blessings and yet you're still holding on to a ghost. You're holding on to someone who's not there. You're holding on to someone who doesn't care about your well-being because if they did, they would have been in your life. And for whatever reason, they are not. Maybe you know why, maybe you don't. But I think sometimes, you know, people leave and it it, it, it just, it, it really makes us feel like this person didn't fight for you. Like this person didn't fight. And I'm saying that because I'm a fighter. I'm saying that because I like to challenge. I like to know what happened. I want to really figure this out. I really care about how the relationships that I have, like how it flows and how it goes, right? But I can't be the only person doing it. And if I'm the only person reaching out, if I'm the only person doing X, Y, and Z, then yeah, it's going to be like, mm, I'm good, you know? And I think sometimes that happens and then the relationship goes astray. And when that happens, you're like, wow, this person did not fight for me. They did not go the extra mile. They did not challenge me. They did not confront me and say, what's going on? We need to talk. And that's hurtful because I think many times, many people, they do want a resolution. And it's crazy because a lot of things can happen with the conversation. And it's really not that deep if you talk about it. Like, it's really not. Like, there's so much happening in life right now. Having a conversation is something that's minimal. It's minimal. However, if that's not happening, what I'm going to challenge you to do is to focus on those who are focusing on you. As hurtful as it is, as stressed out you may be, as confused you may be as well, because maybe you don't know why your relationship is not the way it is, I recommend that writing in your gratitude journal helps. Um, I did an episode about self-care and I talked about the gratitude journal and I also did a blog post about it because, you know, to be honest, it really helps because it forces you even in the midst of your struggle, even in the midst of a bad week, it forces you to really think about all the things that you do have, no matter how big or how small, whether it's the fact that you have ears to listen to this, you have your eyes, you have a phone, you have food to eat, you have some way to lay your head, whatever, find something to be grateful for. Of course, there could always be better or I want this and I want that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about all of the things that you have right now and the people that you have right now. If you have someone in your life that you can depend on, you have a lot. If you have someone in your life who truly cares about your well-being, you have a lot. If you have someone in your life who genuinely cares about the next steps that you're about to take, it's someone who's going to make it a point to reach out to you and call you and visit you and see you in person, you have a lot. So I think it's really important that we focus on what we have versus really focusing on what we lost. And I think that it's important to acknowledge what we lost. 
um, and feel those feelings. I'm, I'm going to keep saying it. Yes, I think it's important to feel those feelings. I don't think it's important to dwell on them. And I think once you have felt those feelings, you have to shift. And writing in the gratitude journal when you're in a tough space helps a lot. You, you're, you're not going to want to do it. That's why I want to challenge you because you're not going to want to do it. So <laughs> I recommend that during a really rough time or a really rough week or a really rough day or a really rough argument that you get in that, you get a book, um, They any book, you could just get any book and call it your gratitude journal and you list seven to 10 things that you're grateful for. Not just one, like seven to 10 things that you are truly, truly grateful for. And it helps focus on what you do have. Focus on those who are focused on you. Focus on those who genuinely care about your well-being and who's not going to disappear on you like that. You don't need some people like that in your life. And sometimes people are dismissing your life because they're not meant to be in it. Your life is too precious and too amazing. You have a lot of stuff to do. We have a lot to do with Save the Good Girl. We have a lot going on. And And one thing I don't have is my energy to be interrupted. So bye um (laughs) but yes get a gratitude journal guys i'm serious it helps i promise you it helps and once you do let me know how you feel about it let me know if that makes a difference for you um but it definitely does help even in your midst of anger so focus on what you you do have and and don't focus on the loss you know it's okay it happened um it hurts move on and now let's think about the strategy now let's our our state is all right, I was hurt, but I'm okay now. Our story is, you know what? I'm really grateful for what I do have. And the strategy is how can we continue being grateful for what we do have in order to really create an abundance for us as well, right? It's a whole it's a whole circle. It's a circle of life. It's a circle of life. It's a circle of love. It's a circle of, of true meaningful relationships. And that's what we have to focus on, the meaningful relationships because that's what's going to keep us steady and keep us going. So utilize that gratitude journal and just jot down everything that comes to your mind. It shouldn't be something that's like hard to think about. Thank you guys for listening to this SOE edition. I hope it helped you because it's something that I realized not too long ago and I wanted to share this with you guys uh, because I think think that it's something that's valuable. Focus on what you do have because if you really think about it, you have a lot. You do. So guys, as you know, I am down. I am here. I'm consistent with you guys. I have my episodes, my affirmations, the SOEs and my full episodes. And of course, I love, love, love talking to you guys. And there's so many ways to stay in touch. Stay tuned on how, and I will talk to you all next week. But yes, get that gratitude journal. Get it. Make one. Tell me about it. Bye. I feel like we're connecting. So let's make sure we're connected. You can find Save the Good Girl on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Did you know about the Save the Good Girl blog? Yes, there is a blog. Check out savethegoodgirl.com to subscribe to the fabulous VIP email list and be the first to know about new podcast episodes, new blog posts, and giveaways. In addition to listening to Save the Good Girl on many platforms like Apple, Google, Spotify, and many more, you can also subscribe to the Save the Good Girl YouTube channel if YouTube is more of your thing. There are so many options to stay connected and be a part of the Save the Good Girl community. For all updates, or if you just want to contact me to say hello, ask me a question, or send me a comment, check out the contact section on savethegoodgirl.com.